Hi, my name is Divya Jyoti Das and this is For the Love of Physics. In this video, I want to look at the problem of length contraction of a rod that is traveling in a direction inclined to its longitudinal length. Now, in one of my previous videos, I talked about the concept of length contraction itself. Length contraction is a consequence of the postulates of special theory of relativity. Whenever objects are moving at very, very high velocities, velocities comparable to the speed of light, then with respect to an observer at rest, their lengths appear to be contracted along the direction of relative motion. So for example, if there is a rod or a stick or a meter scale that is going in this particular direction and it is in relative motion with respect to me, then if I make a measurement of its length, then that length will appear to be contracted compared to its rest length or proper length. So in this video, I want to take the topic a little further and explore the problem of what happens if that scale is traveling in a direction which is inclined with respect to its longitudinal length. What is going to happen to the magnitude of its length and what is going to happen to the angle of inclination? So for that, I have this particular setup here. In this setup, I have two observers. One is an observer in a lab frame, which I'm considering to be rest with respect to the board. Another is an observer in the moving frame, which is in relative motion with respect to the lab frame. These are the two observers and I have associated Cartesian coordinate reference frames with them. So I have x, y, z and x dash, y dash, z dash corresponding to both these two observers. For the sake of simplicity, I'm assuming x is parallel to x dash, y parallel to y dash and z parallel to z dash. And also for the sake of simplicity, I'm assuming that at time t is equal to zero, both the origins of these coordinate reference frames coincide. But because the moving frame is at a particular velocity, it moves further and further away as time goes on. Now let's suppose the relative motion is only along the direction of x, x dash axis. So that means the second frame is moving only in this particular direction. And the moving frame could be anything. It could be a person uh, in a train, in a spaceship, anything in which a scientist or an observer or a measuring device is moving with respect to some kind of a lab measuring device or an observer. Now, let's suppose that I provide some kind of a rod or a stick to the person in the moving frame, such that this rod is at a particular angle with respect to the direction of relative motion, which is happening along the x, x dash axis. So one very important observation is that even though this itself is the moving frame, but because the rod is present in the moving frame, the rod is at rest with respect to the moving frame. The rod is at rest with respect to the moving frame, which means what? It means that the observations made by this observer will correspond to the proper length of that particular rod. Now, I'm interested in looking at the uh, comparisons of the length with respect to both the observers. For that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the coordinates associated with the endpoints. So let's suppose the rod is inclined with respect to the x-axis, but it is restricted to the x-y plane. In that kind of a situation, I can mention the endpoints to be A and B. So let's suppose the coordinates associated with the endpoints A and B with respect to the moving frame of reference is XA dash and XB dash along the X dash axis components and YA dash and YB dash for the components along the y dash axis with respect to this observer. Similarly, the very same points will have coordinates of, let's suppose, x a and x b and y a and y b respectively for the observer in the lab frame. All right. So the endpoints a and b will have coordinates x a dash, x b dash and y a dash, y b dash respectively for the observer in the moving frame. And similarly, the endpoints A and B will have coordinates X, A, X, B and Y, A, Y, B for an observer in the lab frame. So basically, I'm looking at the components of the lengths along the X and the X dash axis. So what is going to be the X, B minus X, A? X, B minus X, A is nothing but the component of the length along the X axis for the observer in the lab frame, which can be written as del X. And what is going to be yb minus ya? yb minus ya, let's suppose it is del y. It's nothing but the component of the length of the rod 
in the y axis with respect to observer in the lab frame. Similarly, I can also show that what is x b dash minus x a dash. So let's suppose this is del x dash. This is going to be the component of the length of the rod along the x dash axis with respect to observer in the moving frame. And similarly, I can say that y b dash minus y a dash is equal to del y dash is the component of the length along the y dash axis for an observer in the moving frame. Now these quantities may be related by the length contraction formula, but you need to understand that the length contraction happens for an observer in the lab frame only along the direction of relative motion. Now which is the direct direction of relative motion here? It is along the x axis. The moving frame is in relative motion along the x axis. So only the lengths along the x-axis only their components will experience some kind of a contraction and the lengths along the y-axis or the z-axis will not appear to be contracted. So if I want to relate del x and del x dash I can say that del x is equal to del x dash root over 1 minus v square upon c square. Here you need to note down the fact that del x dash is the proper length component along the x dash axis with respect to the moving observer. You see this is the frame with respect to which the rod is at rest. Therefore, this del x dash will act as the component of the proper length. On the other hand, del x is the component of the relativistic length as measured by the lab frame. And this length contraction happens because this is the direction of relative motion. However, for the components along y axis, I'll simply end up getting that del y dash is nothing but equal to del y. This is because perpendicular directions do not experience length contraction. So now if I'm interested in calculating the magnitude of the length, all right. So I'm basically interested in calculating what happens to the magnitude of this length. Now the magnitude of the length could be different based on which observer I'm talking about. So let's suppose with respect to the observer in the moving frame, I say that the magnitude of length is del L naught. So this is the rest length or the proper length. So for the observer in the moving frame, the uh, proper length del L naught square is actually equal to del X dash square plus del Y dash square, You're right? Del X dash square plus del Y dash square is equal to the magnitude of the length square with respect to the observer in the moving frame. Similarly, for an observer in the lab frame, in that situation, I'll use the components for that particular observer, which is simply equal to, let's suppose del L is the length, length of the object in the lab frame. So del L square is simply equal to del X square plus del Y square. Here, del X, del Y, del L are all measurements with respect to an observer in the lab frame. So that's it. I can obtain the expression from here. So let's suppose I use this expression. That means del L square is equal to del X square plus del y square. Here I can apply these two expressions, these two equations I can apply. So let's suppose del x square is equal to del x dash square and since this is root over 1 minus v square upon c square this simply becomes 1 minus v square upon c square plus del y square is nothing but equal to del y dash square, right? So if I simplify the terms it becomes del x dash square minus del x dash square v square upon c square plus del y square. Here, what is del x dash square plus del y dash square? This is del y dash, right? So del x dash square plus del y dash square is nothing but the proper length square which is del l naught square. So this is simply equal to del l naught square minus, I have this term here, del x dash square v square upon c square. Now there is a way that I can relate del x dash with the proper length of the rod. That is by defining an angle of inclination of the rod with respect to the direction of relative motion. Let's suppose that the angle at which this rod is inclined to the direction of relative motion is given by theta naught. Now theta naught is measured with respect to this observer, right? Because as it turns out, the angle also undergoes change the moment you go from one observer to another. So let's suppose that with respect to the moving observer, the angle that the rod makes with the direction of relative motion is theta naught. In that situation, what is del x dash? Del x dash is nothing but the component of del l naught in this particular direction, which is basically equal to del l naught cos theta naught. You see that? Now I can apply this here. 
So if I write del x dash is equal to del l naught square cos square theta v square upon c square. So that's it. This is the expression for the relativistic length. I can obtain a simpler expression here by just removing the square term. So I write del L is equal to, if I take the del L naught outside, del L naught root over 1 minus v square cos square theta upon c square. That's it. This is the relativistic formula for length contraction of a rod that is moving at an angle with respect to the direction of relative motion. So del L is the magnitude of the relativistic length as measured by the lab frame. Del L naught is the proper length as measured by the observer in the moving frame. And this is the term root over 1 minus v square cos square theta upon c square. This is the general length contraction formula for any kind of a rod that is traveling in a direction in an inclined manner with respect to the direction of relative motion. Now, this is the expression for the length contraction. What if we are interested in finding out what happens to the angle of inclination? You see, there is contraction only along the x-axis. There is no contraction along the y-axis, right? So there must be some change in the angle of inclination also. We can do that by again comparing del x, del y and del x dash and del y dash. So for example, here I can say that for the case of the moving frame, 10 theta dot is equal to del y dash upon del x dash, right? Del y dash upon del x dash is equal to tan of theta naught. And for the observer in the lab frame, I can write that tan theta is equal to del y upon del x. Now, what is del y? That's nothing but del y dash. So this is del y dash. What is del x? That's nothing but del x dash root over 1 minus v square upon c square. So del y dash upon del x dash is nothing but tan theta naught. So this becomes tan theta naught upon root over 1 minus v square upon c square. So tan theta is equal to tan theta naught upon root over 1 minus v square upon c square. This gives us an idea about the angle that this rod subtends with respect to the moving observer and the angle that the same rod subtends with respect to the observer in the lab frame. So as you can see, when a rod is traveling in a direction which is at a particular angle to the direction of relative motion, not only the length gets contracted because of this particular expression, but the angle of inclination also undergoes change. So as you can see from the relationship of this particular expression, what happens is that as the rod starts traveling at very high velocities, the angle of inclination starts increasing in this particular manner. All right. So this is the entire uh, explanation for how the angle of inclination and the length contracts for a inclined rod. However, if you are interested in obtaining the formula and you do not want to go through the entire process of this derivation, there is actually a shortcut to this. And I can show you that particular shortcut if you are interested. I kept this for the end of the video itself. Uh, there is a very simple way of coming up with this particular expression without looking at the components and that is if you look at what's the component of the velocity, okay? Since the velocity is in this particular direction, what is the velocity component along the direction of the longitudinal length of the rod? So this is the direction of the velocity which is v and the velocity component along the direction of the longitudinal length is v cos theta, right? So this is cos theta. So here I can apply length contraction just by saying that del L, the magnitude of the length of the rod is equal to del L naught root over 1 minus, instead of the velocity V, I write the velocity component along the direction of its uh, longitudinal length, which is V cos theta naught whole square upon C square, which is the same as the formula that we just now obtained here. The reason I kept this for the end of the video is because I think it's a little bit of a good thing that we are familiar with how the components uh, change as relative motion is taking place. But if you're interested in the shortcut, this is one shortcut of coming up with the same formula. So that's it for today. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.